Meta, and uh, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I also once was an international student in uh, Finland. Uh, it was about 10 years ago. Uh, I studied uh, in uh, Jyväskylä University in Finland, and I think that the experience and knowledge that I, I got from, from this um, one year uh, living abroad and studying in another environment uh, was uh, extremely useful, and I, I remember that time uh, very dearly in my heart. But um, today um, I represent the Ministry of Interior and uh, talk, uh, I speak a little bit about uh, what uh, we do to, uh, to, um, to have study migration in Estonia to retain uh, those students that come here and uh, also um, uh, some services that, uh, that more broadly help migratory processes and, uh, and settling in of, of foreigners. So, the main goal of the Estonian uh, migration policy has not changed throughout the years. Uh, the aim is still to uh, encourage uh, the temporary stay and settling in of those foreigners that, um, that uh, don't uh, pose a threat uh, to our public uh, order and internal security and that uh, help to develop our economy, uh, that cont contribute to our society and, uh, and are uh, willing and able uh, to, uh, to con contribute here. And uh, study migration uh, provides a good opportunity to attract those foreigners. And, um, and uh, when we look back then, um, in uh, 2011, uh, a governmental action plan was, uh, was uh, agreed uh, that set a goal that um, we would like to attract uh, foreign students and highly qualified fight specialists that would keep our economy uh, competitive and provide for a good platform uh, for research and innovation. And uh, this action plan uh, actually was in many ways a starting point uh, for, for different uh, legislative changes and also development of some services. And uh, of course the uh, Legislative changes I'm talking about are uh, in the Aliens Act, with, which uh, regulates uh, the third country nationals' migration to Estonia. And um, the changes uh, that were made, of course, were not made only by the Minister of Interior, but there were a lot of stakeholders involved, other ministries, universities, and, um, and, uh, and also uh, advocacy organizations. And, the, and those changes that I will uh, talk about today uh, came into force in 2013, uh, 16, 17, and 18. So in this sense, um, many changes have been carried out uh, throughout the years. Um, in uh, 2013, um, there were uh, some changes made uh, and uh, it was like a starting point for, uh, for also facilitating uh, uh, student migration. Uh, as you may, might already know, uh, one of the migration policy tools in Estonia uh, is a migration quota which is set every year by the government and it cannot be uh, never more than 0.1 percentage of our population. Uh, international students are exempted from this quota, but in 2013 uh, additional changes were made to the Aliens Act which uh, exempted from the quota also those foreigners uh, who have a temporary residence permit for study but wish to stay uh, in Estonia and are applying for another residence permit uh, under different bases. So, for example, if a foreign student is here for study reasons and uh, finishes his or her study uh, and wants to uh, apply for residence per permit for uh, work, uh, he or she would be uh, exempted from the quota. And, um, and also, in order to facilitate the retention of foreign students, uh, exemptions were also made uh, from the salary requirement, uh, which, uh, which is uh, average cross salary uh, usually and uh, unemployment insurance fund permission to hire third country national 
Uh, in 2013, an exemption was made for uh, the persons that have graduated from the bachelor studies, master studies, or doctoral studies. Uh, this means that Estonian companies uh, can hire those persons in a more flexible way, and uh, and uh, and that, in in our view, and also in the view of the partners who were uh, in the drafting process, uh, should uh, facilitate the process of our uh, foreign students moving to to the Estonian labour market. In 2016, uh, another, uh, groups, uh, some other groups were exempted from the salary criteria and unemployment insurance fund permission. And uh, this involved those persons uh, who have graduated from the professional higher education or integrated studies. And also, uh, quite an important change was made uh, that provided a possibility uh, for an extra six months uh, legal stay in Estonia after the expiration date of residence permit for studies. Uh, this means uh, that uh, it's a good opportunity for a student after the studies uh, to stay here and uh, look for a job uh, or, or some other uh, basis for the residence permit. But the changes continue. In uh, 2017, some more exemptions were made uh, from the salary criteria and unemployment insurance fund permission. Um, and then that uh, involved uh, those uh, foreigners that have acquired a vocational education in, in Estonia in the levels four and five. And uh, for those who are not familiar with those levels, uh, this means uh, persons who have um, knowledge of uh, more complex uh, tasks involving machinery, uh, machines and devices, craftsmanship, uh, skilled labor, highly skilled laborers in the field of ag agriculture and fishing and so on. And also, uh, more uh, flexibility was provided through the creation of possibility to receive a residence permit for study that is valid until the nominal length of the studies. And why is it important? Because before that, it, uh, the residence permit was given for one year, uh, but no longer than the actual study period. And uh, now it was uh, possible to give the residence permit until the end of uh, nominal period of the studies. Again, a significant change. Um, also, a possibility was created for foreigners who have a doctoral degree um, to obtain a residence permit for, uh, for a permanent stay. And, um, and uh, they were exempted for the criteria that we usually have. So the criteria was uh, that the person had to uh, live here before five years, and then uh, integration requirement, and also a uh, requirement to have a specific uh, basis or purpose for the residence permit. Again, uh, the main aim of all of those changes uh, was to provide our employers uh, the possibility to hire those highly qualified specialists that are already in Estonia, that have studied here uh, for, I don't know, three to five years maybe, and that already have settled in. Uh, and uh, in 2018, uh, and another change was made. Uh, so when I spoke uh, earlier that uh, students, after the end of the residence permit, they can uh, stay for six months, then uh, this was lengthened for uh, 270 days uh, after the expiry of the residence permit uh, to lengthen the period of a person then to find another basis for, the res uh, for their residence. Uh, again, uh, I don't have to repeat, uh, with the aim of uh, making it easier to enter our labor market. And also, in 2018, uh, students and researchers directive was transposed uh, to the Estonian legislation. And now a person that has a residence permit or long-term visa from another EU member state uh, is allowed to stay in Estonia for higher education purposes up to 360 days. Um, now I, I, I stop with the legislative changes. Um, but uh, as you can see, there have been quite few of them in the recent years. And, uh, and uh, with all of them have the same common goal. Uh, a little bit of the statistics. Uh, as you can see, uh, the study migration 
statistics um, have increased. Uh, in the last two years, they have been remaining in the, in the same uh, uh, area uh, to uh, 1,400. And um, when we look at the valid residence permits for a study, then um, we can say that uh, the persons holding a valid residence permit for study in the recent years has remained between 2,300 and uh, 2,700 um, persons. So uh, it hasn't changed too much, but it has increased. And uh, when, I, I think our minister was also saying that, but I just uh, will repeat that uh, uh, most of the students uh, from third countries come here for master studies. So valid residence permits for study are mostly for master studies and then doctoral and, and bachelor studies. Um, so, the changes in the regulation are important and they have been carried out and it's important to know about those possibilities. But also, um, Minister of Interior has developed some services for the, for the migrants uh, that would help those persons in, in their migratory processes and also uh, in settling in and also if they want uh, then to enter our labour market. And, um, Without a doubt, we have many other services in Estonia. Uh, today, I will focus only on two uh, that uh, are under the Ministry of Interior, but, but there are international houses, the, there are language houses uh, now, so there are several other services that contribute to the settling in and integration. First of all, I will talk about the migration advisors uh, that um, are under the Police and Border Guard Board. And this uh, service was launched in 2017, has been uh, becoming an extremely popular and uh, helpful source uh, for the uh, foreigners uh, as regards information of, um, of how to come to Estonia, how to stay in Estonia, and if uh, need be, how to live, uh, live here. And uh, as you might think, know or, or have the experience yourself, uh, it's not very easy to interpret uh, legislation of another country when you are a foreigner there. So the aim of this service is to, uh, to help foreigners to understand our uh, legislation in a better way. And uh, the information is provided about uh, what kind of documents to submit uh, how to bring my family, if I, if I can bring my family along. Um, uh, my residence permit is about to end, but I want to stay. What are the other options? But also, it's not only for the foreigners, it's also for the universities, for example, or companies uh, with the aim that they are hosts, and if they want to hire or invite a foreign student to Estonia, that they would uh, get information of how to do it in a legal way. And uh, this uh, information service is provided in four places in Estonia, major uh, cities, uh, in three languages, Estonian, Russian, English, and through Skype, email, phone calls. Also, our uh, advisors do trainings uh, if they are invited, uh, so they can give also advice uh, on spot and give lectures of, of our legal system. And uh, we can see from the statistics that uh, only in 2018, uh, uh, up to 15,000 contacts were made, so we can say that it is useful and, uh, and uh, necessary uh, service. Another uh, service that we have developed is a welcoming program, and it was launched in 2015 uh, with the help of EU funds, and uh, it aims to provide the necessary information uh, to those foreigners that have stayed in Estonia less than five years, but basically we, we mean it as for those that have just arrived, because the information that the person gets from there is, is very practical. For example, why Estonians use the ID card for everything, basically, or uh, how to pay my taxes, or what is the working culture in Estonia, or, or what is the 
uh, I don't know, wh where to put my children to the kindergarten. So very practical information. And this program uh, it, it includes eight modules. Um, also one module about studying and one module about working and entrepreneurship. Uh, all last for one day and every foreigner can choose the topics they are interested in. Uh, trainings are held in uh, three major cities where most of the foreigners live, live uh, Tallinn, Tartu and Narva. And um, from the statistics we can say that we have reached up to 4,000 participations uh, in three years. Um, so overall, what I would like to say is that legislative changes and different services uh, have been developed throughout the years, uh, but we see from the ministry's side at least uh, the challenge that uh, maybe always uh, students but also employers don't know about those possibilities. So what we have to work on is to, to get uh, more knowledge uh, and awareness uh, uh, in, in, um, in the target group. So basically that student would know what the possibilities are and the employers would know. Also, um, it is needed in our view to manage students' expectations. It is not very easy in Estonia to find a job without Estonian language skills. And this means that, um, that students should uh, enter welcoming program. Uh, they should uh, start language courses as soon as they arrive, because otherwise if they discover in the last months of their legal state that they want to stay and they want to work in Estonia, it is very difficult to then start uh, preparing for that. Um, also, um, bringing together students and employers sounds like a very easy thing to do, uh, but uh, currently several ministries are actually talking about how we can do it in a more effective way so that employers would find the foreign students to hire and the foreign students would find an employer that they would want to work with. So in this sense, um, so it seems like an easy thing, but actually at the moment it's a rather challenge and, and we need to think how, how to do it in a better way. And of course, being a representative of Ministry of Interior, we also tackle the other side of the migration. So. Um, misuse and uh, and although uh, also as our minister uh, said uh, luckily we don't have many uh, misuse cases uh, in the student migration but and this is due to very good cooperation of our police and border guard board and universities but however there are always those that uh, want to misuse the purpose of study migration and residence permits and, um, and that is something that we have to deal constantly and, uh, and uh, prevent it in any way. Uh, I have finished my uh, presentation but I also have a video that I can show, <laughs> hopefully. So we look at this small video. Okay. Uh, it's about this welcoming program, and maybe uh, next to my legislative talk, uh, it's a little bit more attractive. The beautiful one is easy. I would say Kohopima Taskut, simply because I love them. They're like the best thing that I've discovered, and this, I, I'm shocked. Estonia is a quiet country. I do like mushrooms, so forests are also very nice to go and pick some mushrooms. Being here as a tourist versus being here as a resident is, is a very different mindset and skill set. You, you know, you need to know the practicalities of, of everyday life when you're when you're doing your everyday life here. We are like a lot of people, different people from all around the world, different ages, and still we can say things, we can discuss, we can communicate, we can share experience and everything. It's very, very useful. Not only learning a new language, but be able to meet different people, interesting people, and learn something from them. The welcoming program is intended for people who have newly arrived in Estonia. And anyone who comes to a brand new country has things they don't understand, has things that work differently from the way they did back home. So the program will answer these questions for these people, will explain to them how life works in Estonia, uh, and does that in a friendly, 
fun, warm uh, atmosphere where a person can not only get information but can also share their own experiences. I met different people from different countries. We all had the same problems to learn Estonian. We all had a lot of fun and our teacher was very patient. We learned a lot and this was really practical, like when you go shopping or when you go and buy some tickets and really things you really need. I learned a new language, even at a basic level. I met new people, I made friends, learned a dozen other things. So I would say get involved is, is the, the, the basic point. Get involved in any way you can. Um, meet people, experience things, learn as much as you can. Sign up and join us. Thank you.